R.T. The Great British Institution. <laughs> Welcome to Congress House. The Sylvia Pankhurst Memorial Committee is striving for a lasting memorial to Sylvia Pankhurst was a socialist feminist. She was an anti-racist, she was an anti-imperialist and she was the founder of the East London Federation of Suffragettes. We've commissioned the sculpture and that's lovely. We've got, we've got the maquette, the bronze maquette. What we have, uh, and what we wanted was it for, to be on College Green outside Parliament because um, Sylvia's mother and sister, that is to say Christabel and Emmeline, have got, you know, they're on the, the side of um, the House of Lords. But really I wanted to find more about the other side of it as well, so that led me to researching Selina Cooper's background, who was a, um, a northern suffragist who was just as influential as Mrs Pankhurst in her activities in gaining the vote. House of Commons has agreed to it, but the House of Lords hasn't. Women must be free! You are no daughter of mine. I recognise you from the mill at Briarsfield. The Trades Union Congress agreed to press for the immediate franchise for women. Glorious days. Well, I became involved when Ruth told me about the project she'd undertaken. And we, at a very early stage, agreed that it was important to try and get a balance between the two views we were presenting. The two views were the suffragette view, which is about direct action, and the suff suffragist view, which is about working with people on a non-violent and uh, non-interventionist basis. And um, we decided that each of us would take a different role in the writing. So I took on the role of uh, trying to present the, the Pankhurst point of view in as, in as strong a view as possible and Ruth took on the role of presenting the view from Selina Cooper's perspective. Thurza Poe, which is quite an unusual name, and we've since discovered that it was probably Thurza Cohen and the family changed the name because of the sort of um, negative attitudes towards the Jewish community at the time. Um, and she was a militant suffragette. Um, she as I said, was imprisoned three times in Holloway, was on a hunger strike. Yeah. Selina had an entry in her diary, a very small entry, that just said, I had tea with Mrs. Pankhurst. She was very cold. And that was when their relationship had cooled and their friendship was no longer. Um, and from that, the idea of having tea, the theme of tea throughout the play, it grew from there. Wouldn't talk about it. This is the strange thing. When my mum turned 15, she um, and my grandmother died. She left her a box of all these artefacts, including all the badges and um, the envelopes that they sent each other letters in were dipped in the three colours like mm. this, and the scarves they wore and the kind of stewards' badges. The point is that everyone's heard of the Pankhursts, but the, the role of many women, whom Selina Cooper is just one, who campaigned for the vote, has largely been overshadowed over the years. But when you look at the history of this, you'll find that women like Selina Cooper had just as much influence on gaining the vote because they worked within the trade unions to get the trade unions to support uh, women's suffrage. And that actually, in the long run, brought greater pressure on the government than did the uh, suffragettes with their direct action, who, to some extent, by the time the First World War broke out, had marginalised themselves in the debate. It's harsh, you should have to be here. Go and fight! But I were there, I saw it, and I felt there was nothing that could have stopped us on the road to freedom! It begins with their friendship. It's about their, their journey and their eventual political differences and their different tactics of, of gaining the vote. And both incredibly influential women, but very different, as it turned out. But I still don't understand which of them won the vote. If you had done as much, anything at all, as much as Mrs Cooper, as much as Mrs Pankhurst, you would have your answer. Brilliant. So it told me a lot of things 
I thought it was quite balanced because it showed her as a pacifist earlier on and that she was a supporter of the Independent Labour Party. But she, um, she was heavily under the influence of her rather domineering elder, sis, elder daughter. It was excellent, yeah. It, was, um, it really sort of highlighted the two causes and although they, they had the same sort of goal, they were poles apart, it was really entertaining. The, the last line where actually said, um, it, yes, who, who, who won the vote? And obviously it didn't mind, you know, it didn't matter the background, but what it meant was what it was important, was what they were fighting for. I thought it was excellent. It gave a good insight into the background of the vote for women, the trade union movement and its development over the years and I just thought I thoroughly enjoyed it. I saw lots of things I hadn't considered before. I think that the whole concept behind the, the vote for women was always down to Emmeline and to an extent Christabel and everybody else was just seen as an acolyte of hers. It's like they didn't really have a life on their own. And I enjoyed the the fact that it was to a union. You know, to Mrs. Pankhurst was, um, you know, talking to union members. That was very good. It was nice to to do it like like Larry said. It was nice to do it to the union members. I mean, particularly for me because I felt like they were all on my side. You know. Yeah. Um, being Selena Cooper and you know, I mean, when, we, when I did the, the speech about pacifism and, and uh, objecting to conscription, people were applauding. You know, I think the audience really got behind it. Yeah, they did. And that's what it's all about for us. You know, we're trying to tell a story which is a little bit of hidden history in there with mm. the suffrage, mm. and it's it it's really makes me very proud to be a part of this production because not only did my best friend write it, that's this mm -hmm. woman here but um, strong parts for women, not just because people in the audience enjoyed it, which is obviously the entire point, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, to, to mm -hmm. inform and entertain the audience, but it's lovely for the performers to feel like they're part of something. Probably harder on Mrs Pankhurst, <laughs> because, you know, I mean, they're, they're snippets of her actual speeches, and it's quite shocking, some of it, that she's, you know, um, she... she what she did to the trade unionists, you know, that she did grass them up for not, you know, uh, being involved in the war effort and things like that and sent people to the front and <clears throat> I think it's quite a revelation that when you wear it because uh, I don't know, I don't know if it's a well-known fact about her really. I think it does when you've got pieces which are going out promenade into the audience then you can really engage with them more, you can, you can, you can um, look at them directly and you can make them feel like they're part of the show. Which is, um, which is, I like that if I'm in an audience, because there's no danger that you're actually going to be asked to get up. The actors are just right there. It keeps people on the toes. You can make them a little bit afraid by threatening that we're going to come in and do things to them. <laughs> we're usually what keeps people away, doesn't it? They're very happy to boost the campaign to get a statue for Sylvia up. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Any support they can give to that is great, because yeah. it's really important, we feel. We might be playing Glastonbury. But not the festival, the town. Well, you never know. We could, we could do the, the kind of rock musical version. <laughs> I fancy wearing leather pants. Wendy. You know, Wendy. that's just me, though. <laughs> <laughs>